What's up everybody out there? Welcome to Gamers with Gains. Today I'm talking about something that's near and dear to my heart, kind of like it was the ground zero of my gaming journey, and kind of helped shape me into what type of gamer I am today. Today I'm talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, everybody's favorite blue blur god of the mascot. I was going to say blue bomber, but that's Mega Man. <laughs> but I'm wearing blue here, kind of like, you know, kind of celebrate what I'm talking about today. Because Sonic the Hedgehog is actually near and dear to my heart. Again, it was the very first video game that I ever played on the Sega Genesis back in the day. Kind of started me on my actual journey of being a gamer throughout life. And it's really kind of resonated with a lot of people throughout their lives and kind of grown up with. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog was part of the big, great gaming console war back in the day between the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Pretty much Sega versus Nintendo. You know, if you guys have ever read the book Console Wars, they kind of go into a little bit more detail about it, or pretty much everybody knows a little bit about the gaming history that was that great, crazy console war. I grew up in the midst of it. I was a Sega kid back in the day, but I still played my Super Nintendo at my friend's house because we were smart like that to play both systems because we can only afford one in our household. <laughs> Either way, I'm here to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. More specifically, Sonic's kind of like decline from grace. And pretty much, it's kind of like a bad thing to really almost talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. There's always a negative continents with it. And it's really it's kind of sad to see such a great and really influential gaming mascot and gaming character and figure of the gaming industry kind of just slowly and steadily declined throughout the years ever since i want to say his real last kind of like real hurrah was on the sega dreamcast now i didn't own a sega dreamcast i kind of got into it a little bit later other people more kind of like better than me that grew up within that time frame alongside of me actually a little might be a little bit much more better suited to tell you about the sega dreamcast but i will talk about classic sonic and classic sonic to me is 2d sonic on the sega genesis all the way up through the 32x or the sega saturn uh, all the way up to the, what is it, all the way up to the Dreamcast, and really that being the last hurrah. But Sega Genesis was my Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic 1, 2, and 3, and Sonic and Knuckles. That was like the, the, quinch, the kind of like holy quintuplet, okay, of Sonic's like golden years. Pretty much was the start. It was during that console war period. And really that's where for me, where I felt Sonic was at his best, in the grand scheme of things, in retrospective, Sonic itself wasn't a very complicated game. It wasn't very good as far as like overall quality compared to a lot of other games that were coming out at the time. What really Sonic had for him and why he was so appealing was not only his attitude, which was a product of the 90s that was done by Sega in response to Mario, looking for kind of like a good antagonist or a good kind of like, you know, different flavor of character to give to the general public to compete with Nintendo at the time, but also was his speed. Sonic was speed, you know, kind of like what they call blast processing back in the day, which is a BS term for, you know, for pretty much just saying that, you know, the, the RAM of like the Sega Genesis was actually allowed it to go a little bit faster than the Super Nintendo appear faster on screen. Really, it's kind of a BS term. It was a lot of marketing at its finest. But the speed of which he kind of like, you know, had his different games and all four of those games back on the Sega Genesis were really was like kind of like nothing we had never really seen before at the day, time of day. And the way that it was marketed and put out towards everybody was something kind of like, you know, unspoken of really beforehand. Really, Sonic was all about the attitude, was all about the kind of like sense of speed and the just kind of like crazy nature of what his kind of like character, what his type of style of game was. Now, don't get me wrong. Again, I said before that it really wasn't up to the, to the snuff of like the different quality that it was back in the day on the Super Nintendo of some of those games. But still, it was fun to play through. It was like that sense of speed just running through the level, going through the loop-de-loops, you know, jumping on the different kind of robots and freeing all the little kind of animals. That was fun to me back in the day, especially that being my first video game. is like being totally blown away by like this thing called a video game for me back at the time. And it was really, really cool. And as I got older, some of my favorites that really kind of resonated with me were Sonic 2 and more specifically Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which re really for me was kind of like the pinnacle of the series as far as like what the level design, the different stuff and the interactions that you were having with some of the enemies and the different kind of like background objects, as well as the introduction of Knuckles, which really was kind of like a, a really kind of like a new, new wave type of thing for me at the time. Because to me, it was always Sonic and Tails or just Sonic the Hedgehog himself. If you grew up with the actual cartoon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Chili dogs. <laughs> but with that being said, after that Sonic and Knuckles game, and now granted some people say Sonic CD was really kind of like the grand kind of like daddy of the Sonic series, it really wasn't for me because I never really dabbled in it back then. I didn't own a Sega CD at the time. I really just owned a Sega Genesis for years and years 
prior to me getting a Nintendo 64. Like that, and then eventually a PlayStation 2. But for me, anyway, the Sonic games that I saw, again, without having really looked at Sonic CD, I saw stuff like Sonic 3D Blast, and then I saw Sonic Spinball, which was on the game here and stuff, and I saw the other Sonic games that started kind of like started popping up here and there, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and all this other jazz. But really, after Sonic and Knuckles, which was kind of like pretty much just like DLC for back in the 90s for Sonic 3, that's when things started going really downhill. Again, I never really dabbled in Sonic Adventure. I never really got on the hype train with that, you know, and really kind of dived into the ecosystem that was the Dreamcast. But after that, I never really saw a lot of really good Sonic games for me as a fan growing up with Sonic the Hedgehog afterwards. And then when I really started to kind of like go into that point where I was exploring other systems, the N64 and eventually the PlayStation 2, I didn't see pretty much any Sonic the Hedgehog at all. It was like a forgotten relic from a time when I was still back in elementary and middle school. So when I finally got a chance to actually see Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, when it actually had all the marketing and stuff for the Dreamcast at the time, and then eventually some of the later games as we started going more into the 3D realm, and then we got into Sonic 06 eventually, you know, so Sonic the Hedgehog really kind of just dropped off for me. I just I didn't really care as much about him anymore as much as I did back in the day. I really loved that classic 2D style, you know, speeding through the level, jumping on different ro robots and fighting Robotnik and such. That was Sonic the Hedgehog to me. When they started seeing stuff with Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, or Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, you know, the remake for it on the GameCube, and then seeing other stuff like Sonic 06, and then we started getting into Sonic Unleashed, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic and the Secret Rings, and stuff like that, and up till now, where we have all these plethora of like Sonic games that to me wasn't really true Sonic and I was just like why should I even care anymore there was so many like stuff being done to kind of like change up the formula and really try to make Sonic relevant again in an industry that was completely just changing up and things were evolving with the times and it just didn't translate very well a lot of mascots specifically Mario was really the one that pioneered going from 2D to 3D and then when we see characters like Sonic, even other franchises like Castlevania and a whole bunch of others really kind of make that jump into 3D, it really didn't translate very well. It really was just kind of like all over the place. It was just for the sake of trying to be hip and cool, which really what Sonic was really founded upon. It was all this sake for trying to be hip and cool that just didn't really translate, translate well into fun gameplay. And that's really what kind of did it for me. The games just weren't fun anymore to play. And it was sad to see that because I love Sonic. I love... I was really a big Sonic fan growing up. I loved playing the games. I loved checking out some of the comics. I loved checking out the cartoons. There was like three cartoons at one point. You know, Sonic, the image of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, it's uh, just titled like that, Sonic Underground, all these different things. And then the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which came from Japan, which was like the anime style Sonic, which really was kind of based on like Sonic CD, pretty much for the most part. But it was just kind of sad to see all this stuff that I really loved just all of a sudden be completely irrelevant just one day. And I was just like, man, what a damn shame, because I would have loved to see Sonic evolve into, like, the level of what Mario was because of such, like, a titanic influence on a lot of people's childhood from back in the day. Now, let's be real for a second. There are some games that did come out that did kind of, like, give Sonic a little bit much more relevance now in the modern day. We had Sonic Colors, which some people think is a good game, and I think it's just kind of, like, okay. Really didn't have a lot of re well, relevance and resonance with me. And also Sonic Generations, which really was trying to go back to that 2D style of Sonic, and also Sonic the Hedgehog 4. The problem was with those games, Sonic and Generations really kind of like, pretty much didn't really directly translate what was in the Sega Genesis games. It tried to emulate it to a point, and then kind of like mixing in some of the newer levels from the 3D Sonic games and trying to make them 2D, really was just kind of like, okay, it really didn't have that same level of impact that I felt from back in the day. I really wanted it to be something special, just had that same type of style, but really kind of like work in the formula and really give me something different to get excited about using that same type of basic approach of what Mario does. Mario games, a lot of people give Mario a lot of crap for being the same thing over and over again, but you gotta recognize the genius in where the same type of like basic ground principles apply for every Mario game, just presented to you in a different fashion. And that's what I felt like Sonic could always benefit from. And then same thing also goes for Sonic the Hedgehog 4 episode one and two. I felt it was really dumb to kind of split those up into two episodes. Just give me one long game with just a bunch of levels just to play as Sonic, just from A to B, very similar to Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I would have been fine. And I would have been cool with that. I found it a little bit weird how they didn't include Knuckles in Sonic the Hedgehog 4, you know, because again, it would have been fun to have a little bit of continuity there, but it was just like, whatever. It, it kept borrowing too much 
from newer versions of Sonic and trying to make it and shoehorn it as a classic Sonic adventure, which really just didn't click with me. And I'm pretty sure it didn't really click with a lot of other people because not many people bought that game. Not many people even cared about it. I didn't even really hear about Episode 2 coming out that had the Metal Sonic in there until somebody had mentioned it to me. I didn't really even see a lot of stuff in, even in the games media. No, really, Nobody even really cared about it. And then now we get to this point, which now Sega pretty much, you know, I forgot the guy's name at the current moment, but just gave a couple outlandish statements. It's like, we kind of betrayed the fans for so many years and we want to kind of like regain their trust and find out what we could do to make our actual IPs and our actual company relevant again. It was like, well, freaking duh, you could have been doing that already for the past decade. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just kind of sad to see that. And I wish that Sega had did a little bit more with Sonic to kind of really just make him a little bit much more of a relevant IP, a relevant game series, to make me love him, bring me back to that time that I grew up as a kid. And it just is real too much of a shame with that. But even so, we got games now like Sonic Boom, and now we're getting another Sonic Boom, which nobody asked for in part of a three-game deal with Nintendo and Sega. It was just like, oh, man. They changed up the designs, made the characters really kind of like caricatures of them, of their former selves. And it was just pretty much, this is not what Sega fans wanted. This is not what Sonic fans wanted. This is not even what gamers really wanted. It was like, it felt like, you know, Sega was just kind of like pacifying Sonic the Hedgehog, their biggest, most influential IP, the most influential mascot and character, and just shooting him over to the side. A little bit much in the same vein as what Capcom has been doing with Mega Man, but that's another discussion for another time. Overall is this, and what I could really say. Sonic the Hedgehog pretty much now is a relic. He's a relic of a long forgotten time of gaming that was more fun, that was a little bit much more with cheeky attitude, and just nostalgic kind of like cool times. It's, he hasn't grown and evolved very well with everybody else, especially people that grew up actually playing his games as the first one, like me, playing Sega Genesis as my first gaming system. Hopefully, what really, really is kind of like necessary now for Sonic to do in order to become relevant again at some point or even become some sort of like impactful type of series is to go away for a while. I really think that Sega should just pretty much shelve Sonic for like a good like couple of years, work on a game that really kind of like brings back the essence of what Sonic the Hedgehog is, the attitude, the speed, and the, the craziness and the tongue and cheekness of what made those four original games on the Sega Genesis so good and really kind of just blow everybody out the water and wow everybody with a resurgence of Sonic later on because right about now everybody just has such a bad taste in their mouths about Sonic the Hedgehog. I really wish that you know it wasn't the case but you can't really call a bad game any good, any sort of good quality. You have to call it as it is so hopefully Sega smarts up does exactly what they say as far as like really kind of working for the fans here and actually does something to kind of give Sonic the Hedgehog a much needed break and a much needed kind of like better return to grace. So that's just my thoughts on the matter guys. Leave your comments below in the comments section. Tell me what you guys think of Sonic the Hedgehog. Tell me what you guys think of Sega and I will talk to you guys again real soon. Kind of like you know from a classic Sega Sonic fan. Again it's a real shame to see where kind of like my old school favorite mascot, favorite gaming series has gone but who knows. One can only hope that he actually kind of like comes back one day, comes back swinging too. So I'll talk to you guys again real soon. Peace out and stay epic everybody.